Hello, my name is Will Dean. I am the forest author. I am talking to you from a hut beside a stream in a forest in Western Sweden. And it is good to be back and it is nice to be talking to you. Um, today I want to talk about how to deal with expectations of social media, of author events and so on, if you are really introverted or shy. So a lot of authors are naturally quite introverted. Not all. Some are extraordinarily extroverted. It's, there's the whole spectrum, right? But some authors are very shy and they feel uncomfortable with the prospect of uh, talking to 800 people at Harrogate on a panel. Or they feel uncomfortable with doing hay. Or they feel uncomfortable with being interviewed on radio, live radio. They feel uncomfortable even doing like a podcast chat. They feel uncomfortable being interviewed by a journalist, etc., etc. Totally understandable. And I think that most authors are introverts who have a little bit of a showing off part of their personality. So for me, I'm a forest hermit. I don't want to see really anybody most of the year. And then very occasionally, I love being on stage and talking about other people's books, talking about my books. It's an absolute pleasure. But everyone's different. So if you are really, really introverted and you're, let's say, submitting to agents now or your debut is coming out next year and you're worried about expectations from your publisher or from your readers about how accessible you're going to be, then I want to talk through a few different like options, a few different uh, tips and tricks so you can get around that issue in a way that is comfortable for you and uh, doesn't make you feel like you're doing something you don't want to do. So first of all, Within social media, there are different types of social media. Like if you're an author who does not like being photographed or filmed, you can still use Instagram to photograph other people's books, to photograph your books, to photograph your inspirations. And that could be really popular. It doesn't have to be a photograph of you or your life. Um, it could very well be a photograph of the book that you read last week and a small review of it. So don't think that you have to put yourself out there. If you don't want to put yourself out there, do not do it. You do not have to do it. Uh, if you want to use Twitter, that's a much more kind of word-based format. You never have to show yourself. You know, even your avatar can be your book cover. It can be something completely different. So Twitter is a really good way to connect with readers without having to share too much of yourself. If you don't want to even do that, if you don't want to use social media at all, then don't. You do not have to use social media as an author. Um, I think it helps if you do, because it's a very easy, frictionless way of interacting with your readers. And readers do like talking to writers. I think it's because they feel a connection through the characters and through the stories. Uh, but if you don't want to do it, then don't do it. Or find a way that you're comfortable with. For example, you might want to write a blog post on your website. That's something you're in control of as a writer. That's something you can do in your own time frame, And it's something that can be done in whatever style you want to do it in. So it's perhaps less um, uncomfortable and less of a stretch for you as a writer to do that. If you feel uncomfortable doing like um, tours and live events and panels at festivals, you could always try doing a panel at a really small festival with a bunch of other writers. Some panels are, you know, five or six people on the panel. That might make you feel more, <clears throat> more okay with it. That might be a good option at the beginning. If you don't uh, want to do that, then podcasts are great because, you know, you haven't got a camera in your face. You haven't got a live audience. You don't even need to meet the person. Often you can do it via Skype or something like that. It's a great 
way for readers to find out about your characters and your process and your life as a writer without you doing something again that makes you feel out of your depth or uncomfortable. And then there are the extrovert writers, the writers who are brilliant at being on stage. Uh, people like Mark Billingham, for example, uh, writer, author of the Tom Thorne novels, which are fantastic, fantastic series. If you haven't come across it yet, you probably have. And Mark's great. He's extremely generous and funny. I think hey, he used to be an actor and a comedian, so he's just very natural on stage. He's very good at showing off and he's very, very entertaining. So there are people like that as well. And those guys are great on stage. You know, Val McDermott's another one. She's brilliant on stage. Um, but you don't have to be. So don't worry if you're not that kind of person. You can still be an extraordinarily talented author. If you look at bestseller lists, if you look at books that are reviewed in the big newspapers, a lot of those authors, you don't know what they look like or you've never seen them on stage. You've never seen them interviewed on TV. They're just authors doing their thing. You can do it whatever way you want to do it. You do it your way, is what I'm trying to say. Don't feel too concerned that to get a book deal, to have a career, you need to put yourself out there. You need to write really personal articles about your anxieties and your health problems in newspapers. And you might get asked to do that because that is part of the publicity machine. And it works really well for some writers and some writers do it in a very sensitive way, which then helps a bunch of other people, which is fantastic. But if you don't wanna do that, don't do it. You do not have to do that. You do this thing in whatever way is comfortable for you. This has been Will Dean in the Moose Forest. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back again soon. Thank you. Bye.